Hello and welcome back. During my recent playthrough of the PlayStation 1 classic Newman Haas Racing, I asked the question, would you like to see me do a full season? And you responded in your few and said, if you want, I guess. And that's good enough for me. So this game is based on the 1998 FedEx Kart World Series. Um, however, there were 19 races that took place that season. There's only 10 tracks in the game. Uh, there are over 30 odd drivers. There's only 16 in the game. And there's technically no teams in the game apart from the two blokes driving around in Newman Haas liveries. But we can still do a mini championship of sorts and we can do it with a driver who's got an interesting story, the perfect person to make our champion. Mainly because after this season in real life, he leaves motor racing entirely to become a used car salesman. I mean, what a perfect IndyCar champion. So let's get into it. This is the 1998 Kart World mini series. My name's Ash. This is the outside line. Here we are back in the Ferris wheel that is the main menu of Newman Haas Racing. And uh, let's get the actual game set up. Difficulty level, we're going to the maximum. As with F1 1995, I've never beaten this game on any difficulty, let alone the easy one. So we are going superstar, 10 rounds, we're doing a full season. Just like our F1 1995 season, we're gonna do 15% race distance all 10 rounds, so yellow flags are gonna be on. We're gonna have damage full on once again. As I've always said, I hate um, changing gears on a pad. I am gonna go for fuel and tire wear on though. Turbo, now is that like boost? Because I don't think they had like a turbo push to pass in 1998, so I may regret this. I'm gonna turn that off, because it gives you a little straight line speed boost, so I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go without it. When I did my revisit, I discovered that our two Newman Haas livery drivers, which are Michael Andretti and Christian Fittipaldi, are pretty much always at the front. I think they're always the top two. We'll find out. The other one you can always kind of count on is Alex Zanardi somewhere near the front because in real life he was the reigning 1997 kart champion and went on to be the 98 kart champion as well. And then these two poor fellas would always be at the back and that is because their liveries resemble Newman Haas's great rivals Penske. Now there are no technically no teams in this game apart from Newman Haas but that is obviously a dig at Penske. So we have Adrian Fernandez who in real life didn't actually drive for Penske and Andre Ribeiro who did and he's going to be the man we're going to try and take to win this title. I'll explain why once we get out on track. So Okay, and round one comes to us from the historic Milwaukee Mile in Wisconsin. So, same setup, we'll do a little bit of a practice to get going. We're on the analog sticks. Do I go on board or do I go to sort of moderate chase cam, which I had more luck with? Ooh. Oh dear. Now I wanted to turn the track map on the left off as it took up a big portion of the screen but the game kept turning it back on for me. I'm not doing that and in a hissy fit it did this. Oh that's a good start. It's full on frozen. Oh dear okay we're gonna have to um, do a quick reset on that. It's actually remarkable I've not had to do this on any of the previous playthroughs I've done so far. I'm not gonna touch those menus again. So yes, welcome to the Milwaukee Mile. Now, this is not listed as one of the um, world's earliest purpose-built racing circuits because it actually wasn't built for racing initially. It hosted horse racing on its dirt track, uh, but then hosted motor racing from 1903 onwards as well. Um, and that actually predates the earliest purpose-built tracks, which include Brooklyn's, Indianapolis, Monza. I think those are the first three um, that were all opened after that date. Uh, this track was then paved in 1954 uh, and had an infield road circuit as well and has had a rich history with IndyCar and NASCAR uh, but after some time off the calendar it returned in 2011 and the event wasn't very well attended. And they tried to keep it going, it's a historic venue, it's still technically the oldest operating racetrack in the world 
uh, but it hasn't been an IndyCar since 2015 and uh, don't know if it's coming back anytime soon. So, just like with F1 1995, we've got 12 laps to set our time. Now, usually I talk a little bit about what happened in the real event, but this, because this game is kind of not faithfully and fully recreating the 1998 season, there's going to be some gaps. I'm going to be talking about some drivers that aren't in this game. Also, this is round one of our championship. In real life, it was round seven of the 1998 kart season, and pole position was taken by Patrick Carpentier, or Carpentier. Patrick Carpentier. Patrick Carpentier. Patrick took pole. The driver we are playing as, Andre Ribeiro, got third on the grid. So as a starting target, it's pretty high. It's pretty good. Uh, let's get going and I'll tell you a little bit about the man we're driving as next. So here we go, 12 laps to go. Let's just have a nice clean run round. Got the analog sticks to help control the car this time. I'm just going to catch up that Newman Haas car, but it's not too bad. Straight round. I mean, cut, stop there. That's it. <laughs> Look at that. Straight in with a 17.6. I'm so used to having an absolute horrible time in qualifying, or at least a tougher time in F1 1995. One lap, bang. Pole position on the hardest difficulty. Smug mode enabled. Smug mode disabled. <laughs> Let's tell you a little bit about the man we're driving for. We already know that we are driving for Penske, which in real life, Penske are not underdogs, but because this is Newman Haas's game, they're always right at the back. So technically, they are the underdogs here. As for Andre Ribeiro, not to be confused with Alfonso Ribeiro, who played Carlton in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, no relation, I've checked. He is a Brazilian racing driver. Oh! Ooh. So yes, he's a Brazilian racing driver. Um, started in karting, as many do. Went up through Brazilian Formula 3. Went and drove in British Formula 3, I believe, for a bit as well. But then uh, his big break was in Indy Lights, sort of indie car feeder series he drove with tasman motorsports uh, of the 12 rounds that season he won i think it was four of the races and finished second overall in the standings so a pretty solid season that got him promoted to indycar proper for 1995 with tasman motorsports full indycar team and he had three seasons with that team and won a total of three races in that time he was okay some decent results, some podiums. Highest he ever finished was 11th in the standings with 76 points. So yeah, he seems decent on his day. Interestingly enough, all of his IndyCar wins came at ovals. Well, two ovals and one trapezoid. But then for 1998, he got promoted to Penske alongside the legendary Alonso Jr. Very much gives me the vibe of a Eddie Irvine to your Michael Schumacher with that pairing. Because, you know... He was fine, but not, I wouldn't say like he's going to Penske to be the man. Do you know what I'm saying? Sorry, Andre. I'm assuming a lot here. I am an IndyCar novice for the most part. Ooh. Case in point. <laughs> I'm just going to park it here for a second. You all right, mate? You can't park there, sir. Huh? So yeah, his season at Penske wasn't incredible. He finished 22nd with only 13 points. It was the worst of all four of his seasons in IndyCar, his best result all season, I've just got the results here, was seventh in Vancouver. He then retired from motorsports at the end of 1998, uh, and he got an offer from Roger Penske to go and work in Brazil as a car salesman. He owned, I think, 15 dealerships he took control of in Sao Paulo. Um, and that's what he did. He left motorsport at the end of the season and just sold cars in Sao Paulo for Roger Penske. And that was it. So, underdog car, decent enough driver, and we're going to try and make him the best. And what a start. First place ahead of the two Newman Haas drivers, over half a second ahead of Michael Andretti. 
Alessandro Zanardi, the reigning champion down in fifth. What happened in the Miller 200 in real life? It was won by Jimmy Vassa for Chip Ganassi Racing. Andre Ribeiro, after qualifying third, did not have a good race. He finished 18th, the last of the non-retired cars, 11 laps down. As for our target, we are on the front row of the grid. I don't know what the difficulty is going to be like. Let's say top three. I'm not going to be overly confident and say go for the win. Let's just say top three in with the Newman Haas boys. That will be a good start to the season. Up on screen now, by the way, is the points breakdown for, you know, this game. It's more akin to modern F1, I think that points is. So we'll see what the standings are after this. But those are the points that we can get. It's quite generous. I think it's down to 12th place. We should be scoring in most races, if not all, when it's down to 12. But there we are. We are we are set up and ready to go. Here we go then. Rolling start. And we are away at the Milwaukee Mile. This is the place we won in our revisit as Alex Zanardi. The AI were only on pro that day. We have taken a solid start and just ooh, led away. Oh, it's a squeaky clean start, as the commentators always say. And it actually was, but that was not a squeaky clean corner. And immediately, we've been overtaken by the two Newman Haas boys. 29 laps to go of the oval. Right, let's just take it a bit slower. I carry way too much speed into that corner. But we all... And that looked like, sorry, that looked like a deliberate swipe. Oh, for Fittipaldi! Oh! Oh my god! Yellow flags are on, guys. Where's the safety car? There we are. Oh my god. So we're... We're at the back. At the restart. 25 laps to go. I had a terrible second corner, carried way too much speed in, and I got overtaken by the Newman Haas boys. Then, just as I was recovering, I tried to make a micro adjustment on the, uh, oh dear, on the analog stick, and I obviously turned a little bit more than intended, hit the other Newman Haas car, hitting anything scrubs off a lot of speed, Immediately got overtaken, then rear-ended, round we go. Again, don't know what the damage situation is, whether I've got damage or whether it's only if you lose wings again, I'm not fully certain. But then as a result, safety car at the back at the restart. Now we're cutting through well, we're back up to 10th already. Decent recovery. But wow, don't, don't underestimate the oval. You've got to carry your speed well, otherwise, you know... You're going to lose places, and if you make contact with anything, you're going to get loads of speed scrubbed off. So we're up to ninth. Andretti leads. Oh dear. I'm just easing off the throttle a bit more than I was in qualifying. And there we go, up to eighth. Good recovery so far. Screw it not around. So it's Andretti from Zanardi now. So he's not going to be a routine Newman Hass all the way through which I thought it would be. So that's nice to see other drivers getting up there, but it is still led by a Newman Haas driver in the form of Michael Andretti. That looks like the other Newman Haas car there. 19 laps to go, still time. There we go, good little run up to seventh. And I think patience is key. Nearly got caught from behind there though. And go high and wide. See, they've slow, they slow a little into the corners. Oh! Oh, that was a move. That was a bit of a twitchy move, similar to the one I did. And we're going to get over to... Oh, and clipped again. And that's going to scrub off more speed. That one wasn't my fault. I got driven into there. And that scrubbed off a lot of speed down to ninth again. We were all... If I just, just slowed down through the second of the two left-handers and not clipped the wall, we might not be in the mess. We're three wide. And again, we've just made contact. There is, I think, the other Newman House driver of Fittipaldi around the outside into sixth now. Ooh, don't. There we go. Good speed on the exit. And Scott Pruitt now leads by half a second. 
It's changing up at the front. I like it. And Fittipaldi's down to ninth. Let's keep an eye on the lap count. And we are catching up to someone. And we've just overtaken. Looks like a Newman Haas car very easily. Going quite slowly as well. And we're up into fourth. As we come up to some back marker traffic as well. There is our, technically our teammate in the other Penske livery car. Poor Adrian Fernandez. Now this looks like we're racing for position. There we go, good run. Up into third. 12 laps to go. We are back in the top three. Decent recovery so far. Zanardi has retaken the lead of this race. That looks like the top two up there. I bet you're watching this thinking, God, why why are you being so jerky on the steering? It's, you know, it's just nice and smooth through the oval, but that is the sensitivity of the analog sticks. I just feel like every little tiny mo movement is... We, oh, we can't do tiny movements! Crap! I was too busy looking at them fighting. And we are being caught now. Let's see if we can get back up to speed. I'm worried the oval race might end up being a little bit processional, but we've, we've, got a, we've got a race on, guys. And there are the top two once again. Come on, Ribeiro. Here we go, and they're being held up. Zanardi's going to try and go around. I've, oh, I'm stuck on the outside. I'm up to second. Mainly because the second's being boxed in. Caught the wall. Down to third. Yeah, it's hard to do just small movements. It's from one extreme of F1 1995 where you're on the um, where you're on the D-pad. Now to the analog stick. I've got. I just want a bit more sensitivity. Oh crap! Do not get caught in traffic. Come on. Fuel is running low, but there's only a few laps to go. So I assume we're just fueled for this length of race. Oh, I've tried to keep my foot in it. <gasps> Oh dear, we've all got going again, I'm down to fifth, and the front wing is clearly bent, and we're going really slow now, oh dear, oh but fortunately those cars are stuck in traffic and I managed to retake fourth quite easily, can't believe there wasn't another caution period, only four laps left, Zanardi now 4.9 seconds ahead, he's on his way to a win here. Can we at least get back into the podium positions? I see. You just run out of space and I'm down to seventh. Oh my god, the changing is too much. Three laps to go. Come on. There is still a shot at least fourth, maybe third, but I cannot hit anything because it just. It's all about the momentum. Let's not try and get ourselves into silly positions. Let's stay wide. Let's stay wide. And we are up to fourth. I'm losing track of who I'm racing. You are taking... The I am... I cannot believe it. It's an actual nightmare. It's the final lap is starting. I'm in 10th. I'm going to have to go in the pits, surely, to get repairs. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Just do the changes. Zanardi's won the race. <laughs> I'm in the... Um, will I have time to actually overtake anybody? I'm going to literally just fly around this one lap and... Oh my god. Oh, there's cars there. Let's see if we can get past... Oh, have they finished? They're going in the pits. I've got 14th. I've got 14th. That wasn't a million miles away from what actually happened <laughs> to Andre Ribeiro at Milwaukee. Oh dear. Let's just regroup. So, in the end, Alex Zanardi wins. Gets the full 20 points from Scott Pruitt and Gilles de Ferran. Jimmy Vassa, the real-life uh, race winner, finishes fourth. Mark Blundell, the familiar name, in fifth. The scant consolation is we have secured the fastest lap. Either I was driven into, or I had some bad moments where I got the sensitivity wrong and hit people. Didn't negotiate traffic well. But when I got clear... Definitely, definitely quick. There are the driver's standings after one round. Alex Zanardi, the real-life reigning champion and the man who would go on to win. Top of the table from Scott Pruitt and Gilles de Ferran. 
uh, the Newman Haas boys, Fittipaldi in 12th, 11th. I wish it wouldn't flick about so much, that is slightly irritating. Uh, and yes, Andretti, no points, no points for us. We'll have to see how consistent people like Zanardi and Pruitt are throughout the season, because I'm expecting more from the Newman Haas boys to be up there as well. On to the next round, which I believe is going to be in Toronto. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this new series. Um, please do like, comment and subscribe if you're enjoying it. Remember, I've got my other series uh, playing through the F1 1995 season as Jean Lacy. That is coming to its climax very soon. And uh, yeah, more IndyCar action very soon as well. So thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you for the next one. Thanks very much.